Today is going to be a little bit of a smaller project, but something that I've been interested in doing for a while now. Today we're going to be repairing an iPod I bought off of eBay, nothing more and nothing less. It's just something that I've never actually done before. This right here is an iPod 4th generation that I picked up off of eBay. And you're probably thinking, wow, that looks clean, I wonder how much you paid for that. Well, that's because this is finished and working, but it was not this way when it arrived. So let me take you back a few weeks to when I decided to put a bid on a random eBay auction for an iPod that would end up teaching me some useful things about iPods, as well as keeping me entertained, as well as still being a useful product well on a decade later. Now, this iPod was listed as for parts and not working, as apparently if you turn it on, it would load up and tell you to go straight to a web page. And in the pictures it looked pretty scuffed up, but if you watched any video at all on this channel, you know that cleaning things up, when they tend to look pretty awful, is something I'm actually pretty good at. What I didn't know was whether it'd be worth fixing this little pod, because I've never dealt with one of these before. And then when it arrived, it arrived in this rather sad looking packaging, and this was my new, used or broken, however you want to put it, iPod Classic. And once I'd got through the apparent packaging, it looked about the same as it did in the photos when I bought it. But it must have taken quite a beating on its way over, as there was no bubble wrap at all, just a light bit of packaging, sort of foam style stuff. It's not very good for packaging stuff when bubble wrap is so cheap. And there was a bit of sellotape around it as well, you can't forget that. But once I'd broken out the scissors, things got pretty strange pretty fast. See, remember this thing was purchased and sold as not working? Well, you can imagine my excitement when this thing did actually turn on and seemed to be working absolutely fine. I didn't know how well it was working at this point, but it did seem like the previous owner had loaded up a lot of bops onto this thing, with everything from the Stone Roses through to the Streets and Michael Jackson through to the Black Eyed Peas. There was genuinely a lot of music bunged onto this little thing, but it was unfortunately a little bit too good to be true. As when I went to actually try and play some music, because that would have made for a great iPod restoration video, not that this was ever meant to be a video in the first place, the hard drive seemed to lock up and reboot the iPod, leading me to believe that the awful packaging might have knocked that poor little hard drive back into life, but not enough to actually cause it to work permanently, it must have caused some real damage in there. Still, this gave me a little bit of hope that we might actually be able to get this thing actually running again. With this, it was time to break out the tools, or whatever I have left over from fixing old phones in the past, and try and get this thing open. And with a little bit of time, and a little bit of careful prying or sliding, or whatever we're going to call it, with one of those little pry tool things, I actually managed to get the top of the iPod off, and genuinely, the form factor in these is actually really impressive. There was, however, a screw down the bottom of the iPod where the charger port cover was slightly loose. I'm not sure how that would have happened unless someone had actually been inside at some point and left that loose. And the height of our problems was visible on screen. That tiny little hard drive had gone bad. But was there any way around this problem? See, I don't really want to put another hard drive back inside this thing. Now to open up package number 2, or 3, or wherever we are at this point, where I got a hold of a 120GB SD card, a CF to IDE adapter, and of course an adapter to go in the middle. Because what's more reliable than a little mechanical hard drive? Three different adapters bought mostly between a mix of Amazon and eBay. When all of the adapters were installed though, we ended up with a strange little tick on screen which at least was different from the generic error we could occasionally see with the hard drive last time. So I finally got around to installing iTunes on my main computer, never thought I'd be doing that in 2020, but the iPod wasn't recognised at all. Windows was recognising something on the USB drivers, but it wasn't actually doing anything. So I decided next to install Windows XP, where it also didn't work. I mean, it did seem to be recognised a bit better, but I just thought out of nowhere, I will go back to Windows 10 and try it again, you know? Maybe being plugged into multiple computers will have done something. And then thankfully, out of nowhere, it was recognised again. No clue why that worked, but thankfully, for some reason, swapping from Windows 10 to XP and then back to 10 again seemed to allow me to restore the iPod. So all should be working, shouldn't it? Until I actually went back to look at it. As for some unknown reason, it had been restored to 20GB. I have no idea why it was restored this way, 
But after messing around with disk part, because that seemed to be the only way that I could actually remove an iPod partition on a Windows PC and then wipe it all back to standard, I decided to hope for another restoration to try and get this working, which it did thankfully work. At least when I had, you know, the iPod half opened up on my desk connected to a computer, it did seem to recognize as having 120 gigabytes of storage. Either way though, the iPod seemed to be working, so I carefully tried to put it all back together as the screen is on the other side of this bulky adapter setup I've got going on, so you do have to be really careful. And I was going to replace the battery on this iPod, but for some reason it seemed to be holding its charge pretty well. So I didn't think I really needed to, I did buy one for peace of mind, and I might need to later on down the line, but I decided to see just how well the iPod in here is holding up because it looked like it might have been changed at some point given that someone had been in here and the screws had been knocked about. There we have it though, a working iPod. Well, working to a degree because one, it's horribly scratched up and dirty and number two, there is no music on here which kind of defeats the purpose of it being an iPod. Anyway, we should really get around to fixing issue number one because that's something that I actually know what to do because I clean up a lot of stuff, I deal with a lot of old computers, it's one thing that you guys see me deal with a lot on the channel. But with some sandpaper and a whole lot of time, we got this thing looking much better. I really wish I'd gotten some more footage of just how badly scuffed up this was before, as I think I've done a pretty decent job, but when you compare the photos of it before and after, you can see it's actually done a surprisingly good job with some sandpaper and a little bit of time, which really does bring off a lot of the dirt and grime that you're stuck with on a lot of these older 2000s plastics. I've done it on old PCs before, and it does tend to bring back some sort of shine. We aren't going to touch the back of it because that's a whole issue in itself and I don't really want to be polishing metals because I don't need to because it's just going to get scuffed up again. But then that leads us to our final issue. Can this actually import and, you know, play music? After importing a load of my music to iTunes via CDs, download codes or whatever else I had lying around, it wasn't all too long before I plugged in the iPod and it automatically started syncing up all my music, getting it all ready to play. Now I can't play any long segments of music for you as I don't want this video to be taken down. But there we have it, an iPod Classic 4th generation photo, bought and restored for probably around 25 quid all in all. The most expensive part being the 128GB SD card, but even then they are really cheap nowadays. So I'm really happy with how this has turned out and let me know if you are too. So in conclusion, there we have it, a quick iPod restoration video, if you can call it that. We've turned a little broken lump into a fully functioning media player, and for anyone that's going to complain about the battery life saying I should have replaced it anyway, I did test it and I did post it on my Twitter, it ended up lasting about 12 days before the battery ended up needing to be recharged. I will be looking at getting a little dock for this, as I'd like to be able to just stick it on my desk to sync files and maybe have an aux cord running around to my media player. Really, this entire audio setup in this room is just a mess, but it seems to work well for my needs, and it is really nice to have a backup of all my CDs and digital downloads on something that's a tad easier to play them from. And it's a pretty cool little retro device. I did also even buy this £3 FM adapter dock that goes in your car. It's incredibly bulky, but I'm genuinely interested in this. If I can get a hold of like a cheap car to restore for the channel, maybe something a bit retro to go along with it with some audio retro stuff in there. But anyway, I hope you've all enjoyed watching this video. Video. It's been sat there labeled iPod on my desktop for a while and I thought, you know what, I'm going to sit down, I'm going to write a script 
and we'll just restore it together. It'll be fun. So I hope you've enjoyed watching. Good night. So yeah, another little foray into audio equipment. I occasionally do one from time to time on the channel because it's something I do enjoy, it's just not something I usually film. So if you want to see more, I can always film my little projects I do off screen, and you can always like and subscribe if you want to let me know that you want more like this. Or you know, dislike if you don't, your choice. <laughs>